Today we're going to look at the two main reasons differential probes can save your bacon when you need to make scope measurements that aren't ground referenced. Now I want bacon. Hi, thanks for tuning in. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff, and today we're going to look at the two main reasons you want to use a differential probe. Before we get to that, what is a differential probe and how is it different from a standard single-ended probe? Well, a single-ended probe measures the voltage difference between the earth ground clip and the probe tip. Like a single-ended probe, a differential probe measures the difference between two points. Unlike a single-ended probe, a differential probe doesn't have a ground clip. You can measure the voltage difference between any two points. With a single-ended probe, the oscilloscope will find the voltage difference, but for a differential probe, there's a differential amplifier inside of the probe itself Essentially, it preconditions the signal so that the oscilloscope gets a usable input. The oscilloscope hardware doesn't really care if you're using a single-ended probe or a differential probe. Differential probes are super useful for a couple of reasons. The ground clip of your standard oscilloscope probe is directly connected to earth ground, and all oscilloscope measurements are made with reference to ground. This is a big problem if you need to measure an ungrounded portion of your circuit. Here's a simple example. On channel one, I'm showing the 10 volt sine wave that is applied to three identical resistors in series. This is a tightly controlled setup. We know the applied voltage and the value of these resistors, so it's easy to calculate the voltage across each of these resistors. We can't measure all three of those values though, because the nodes between each of them is not connected to ground. When we try to measure them with a single-ended probe, we get 10 volts, 6.6 .6 volts, and roughly 3.3 volts. What if we want to know the voltage across the middle resistor? When we connect the probe, we measure 6.6 .6 volts, but that also includes the voltage drop across both of these resistors. So we can try to add the ground clip, effectively identifying our two voltage reference points. And something weird happens, we get five volts. Why? Well, the ground clip is connected through the scope to earth ground, so we've effectively shorted out our third resistor and now have only two resistors in series. This is all fun and games until you aren't working with a simple resistor setup. Instead, if this was sensitive equipment or these were sensitive components, we could have just blown them up. So we know through simple math that this resistor has a 3.3 volt voltage drop, but what if we want to measure it? Wouldn't it be nice if that ground clip wasn't grounded? Well, that exists and it's called a differential probe. When we connect up to our middle resistor with a differential probe, we see 3.3 volts and everything holds on to its magic smoke. I also ran into this issue trying to measure the load of a full bridge rectifier as I was prepping for the four and a half practical uses for a diode video. Check out the card on that. Let's probe the rectifier with both a single-ended probe and a differential probe and look at the difference. Here's the schematic, and we know what the output is supposed to look like for a sine wave input. When the input is positive, these two diodes conduct. When the voltage is negative, these two diodes conduct, turning the negative input into a positive output. Basically, anything negative should get flipped positive and there will be an overall decrease in signal, however slight, from the diodes. Let's see what happens when we probe this signal with a single-ended probe connected here and here. Channel one is the input and channels two and three are where we've probed. So here's channel two and here's channel three. This only looks like two sets of half bridges, so what's happening? Well, we want to know the potential difference between these two nodes, and when I probe with a single-ended probe, I'm comparing this node to ground and this node to ground. On channel two, you see that the signal hangs at plus 0.7 volts, which is the diode, and then swings negative, and we see the inverse on channel three, minus 0.7 volts and then a swing positive. What we really care about though is the difference between those two channels, channel three minus channel two, because that's the voltage being applied to our load. You can do that with a math channel, but you lose a lot of accuracy and you lose the channel use of your scope and any mismatch between those passive probes that you're using will cause issues. We need a differential probe. So let's hook it up to channel four and see what we get. So we've hooked up a differential probe to channel four and let's see what we get. And boom goes the dynamite. We're now able to see what's actually happening in our system. These are just two simple examples, but this situation pops up pretty regularly. For example, differential probes are often used when measuring switch mode power supplies, inverters, and motor drivers, or really any time you don't want to measure ground reference measurements. This is also what makes DMMs and handheld scopes so useful, they don't make ground reference measurements. Differential probes are also used to measure differential signals, which are common for audio equipment and high-speed serial communication lines. Audio and PCIe have vastly different signal speeds. They're really pretty much as far apart as you can get. So why would you use differential signaling? noise. 
Differential signals and hence differential probes have a tolerance to common mode noise. Common mode noise is noise that occurs on both lines of a differential signal. Differential receivers and differential probes only care about the difference between the two signals, not their individual magnitude. So if both signals jump up a volt or 100 volts simultaneously, the voltage difference between the two doesn't change. For audio applications, this gets rid of a lot of audible noise. For high-speed digital signals, this dramatically improves the tolerance to crosstalk and power plane induced noise. Let's look at an example. Here we have a differential square wave signal. It's two identical waves, but one is inverted. This can represent a digital bus of your choice. And now let's mix in a sine wave on top of it. The sine wave represents noise injected into both data lines. Here's what the signal looks like with a single-ended probe. If I'm a receiver, this is gonna cause some serious problems. We'll get ones where we should have zeros and zeros where we should have ones, the horror. However, if we use a differential probe to probe the same signal, we get this. As you can see, the sine wave is completely filtered out. Well, that's not completely true. It's filtered out according to my probe's common mode rejection ratio, known as CMRR. CMRR is usually dependent on the frequency components of the noise. My differential probe sees these signals the same way a differential receiver would in a communication system. You'd want to use a single-ended probe to debug crosstalk and interference, but a differential probe to analyze your communications data. If you're shopping for a differential probe or have the luxury of trying to decide between multiple differential probes that you already have, here are a couple things to consider. First is bandwidth. This one's a little bit obvious, but make sure to get adequate headroom in your bandwidth. If you don't have enough, it'll affect both your measurement accuracy, especially for things like power measurements, as well as your ability to properly see high-speed signals. Second is attenuation. Attenuations in differential probes vary widely, so choose one that makes sense from a loading and a signal amplitude perspective. Third is input range. How large of an input can it take? This applies to both common mode inputs and differential inputs. Finally, common mode rejection ratio, or CMRR. If you're expecting to deal with a lot of common mode phenomena, make sure the CMRR is adequate. Fun fact, you can also use differential probes as single-ended probes. More on that in this video, which also shows how to use two single-ended probes to make differential measurements. Also, make sure to subscribe, or if you're one of the incredibly talented and good-looking subscribers that have already done that, hit the little bell button to get updated when a new video goes live. I'm Daniel Bogdanov, thanks for watching.